What's up guys, welcome back to part number four of my F15C video build series. So in this part we're going to do painting, so we're going to get that beautiful camo scheme on using those masks and also paint the metallic part of the back of the aircraft. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's go back to this. Um, so real quick, just talk about health and safety. Even though I have a really good extractor found here, which is a bench vent, and it's extracted outside. Um, I'm not using lacquer paints. I'm actually using acrylic paints for the white. Always use a mask as well. Um, you're still atomizing paint. Even though there's no smell, whether it be acrylic, enamel, um, lacquer, it's always good practice to wear a mask as well as um, using a really good extractor. These things that cost very much money in the great scheme of things and pads to health, you know, the health's the most important thing. It also comes in resin dust, you know, we sanding, resin dust, that kind of stuff. It's always good practice to wear a mask as well. Um, sorry, I'm kind of preaching a little bit, just make sure, you know, safety wise is really kind of good to have that mask um, for any kind of paint. Because you, again, you're atomizing paint and that paint's going to be airborne. Even though extractor's going to take care of some of it, some of it's going to be airborne and you're going to inhale that into your lungs. I, I sometimes pretty naughty to be honest with you, I don't wear my mask occasionally and when especially when spraying lacquer paints I can really feel it that night or day after I can definitely feel it in my, you know, it doesn't feel so good whereas when I wear a mask I feel, you know, full health. So enough waffling about that, let me get ahead and get started. So I'm going to put my mask on here and um, I'm just going to fire up the spray booth, the extractor, the compressor. So you're probably not going to hear me so well. So. We're going to use the Game Air Dead White. Now, it's a, a nice thick white, which is really good. Model Air or Game Air. And um, this is what I use in my shadow coat. It's pre mixed, so it's ready to go. If you notice now on my airbrushes, I have an A and an L. So I have separate. This is for acrylic paints, and I have an airbrush for lacquer paints. Just because I get a little frustrated with kind of, you know, getting contamination, contaminations and stuff. So I keep it separate. So. Go ahead and put a little bit in a color cup. We don't need a ton of for this. Just a little bit. Okay, got my mask on. And let's go ahead and get started. So basically I'm going to spray inside all the different panels to create a shadow effect.
Okay, so that's my mask off. Um, so I've done the other side. I want to let this dry for a few seconds or a few minutes before I flip it over and do the other side. Um, you can see there basically what I was doing is, yeah, I can, you can kind of see it there. Just really kind of, there's no method of madness to it. Just kind of shooting for the middle of the panels, very light air pressure, very light little paint. I started off lightly and then came back and, you know, the second time around I was doing a little bit darker to white. So really, basically, you know, obviously white and black makes gray. So it basically ended up like a gray, blotchy gray kind of undertone as you can see there so it's going to look really nice once the great thin paints and lacquer paints once you get the grays down even though we're doing a couple of camo colors it should really kind of show through if we were careful and thin with the paint um the back of the f15 is pretty much metallic -y, especially on the underside um which we'll take care of later so yeah that's basically a shadow coat so again i primed it first with black and then just come back with white in this case again if you could hit, hit me up the fan it was i used model game air um dead white I just find this works really good, um, nice and thick. I've tried in previous episodes using things like LP white, um, lacquer paints, MRP white, um, even T Tamiya white. It just doesn't seem quite do the same. It's really hard to get that cover of the black, whereas this covers the black really good um, for some reason. So yeah, 72701 dead white game air. Um, yeah, really good over the black of Mr. Servicer. You saw that I also had all the other little components I painted separately and did the same thing, just went over basically shooting the middle of the panel lines and just you know, haphazardly. Um, the messier the better, you know, no dirt in the aircraft isn't uniform. So just that's where it is. So let me um, let this dry. I'm going to flip it over. We're going to do the other side, which you don't need to see again. It's going to be exactly the exact same as we do on the upper side. And then you'll come back to the bench and we'll talk about getting these um, the paint down and using the masks. Right, so my paints have arrived. It's been a couple of weeks since we primed. Um, arrived all the way from Eastern Europe and Hitaka Orange. Um, couldn't get these in the US, so I had to go to them direct, which actually wasn't very badly priced at all at the shipping and everything. It was actually pretty comparable to what I get here in the US. Um, so, two colors we're using is the aggressive gray, which is the overall color, which is FS36251. And the dark patches will be Mod Eagle Gray FS36176. Now, the attack around these are number C157 and C158. Um, so these are two colors we're using. Now, I know if you're looking at this, the numbers, the colors are a little bit different here on my mask set. You see here, it gets, it gets different colors. Um, we're going with the obviously aftermarket decals, we're going to Lake and Heath ones, as we, as we know already, and um, this is the colors they call out, the, um, the Mod Eagle colors. If you look at the schemes, it's, a, it's a, in terms of masking and stuff, it's identical between the two. See, I mean, just the slight shade difference in color, but other than that, natural masking itself, it's, it's the same shapes, pretty much. Okay, so these are the masks. Um, Vinyl, they're pretty much reusable really. Um, there's only about, what, 15, which is nice. Um, so this should be pretty straightforward, hopefully, fingers crossed. When I did my 72nd big one in the um, the leaf camo there, there's probably about 10 times as many masks and a lot tinier as well. So this is a little bit more straightforward, just two colors. Now, it's always a little bit counterintuitive with masking um, when you're masking camo. You always go dark to light. When you normally do a paint, you always go light to dark, so you get coverage, but with, in this case, you always go dark to light in, um, with tip, well, 99% of the time in masking sets. So what, what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint these darker colors, which is basically down the middle here, on the wings, in the middle of the tails, back here. And you can kind of see on the side there, we're just gonna paint you know that bit dark and obviously the outside of the tails too. So we're gonna paint those dark. Um, obviously you can go a little bit over. The tendency when I use these before is I'm a little bit conservative with paint and I always don't have enough to cover the mask. So I have to then go back and paint some more and let it dry before I add the mask on. So we'll be, They'll put a fair amount of paint down. Um, we're pretty much gonna probably lose our pre-shading, but there's more post-shading when using these mask sets, I guess, with different tonal variations. So, yeah, so I'm gonna, again, paint the dark bits right now, and um, I'm not gonna get, switch over to the spray booth and show you. I, I mean, you all see me spray paint before. It's, it's you know, it's what it is, it's pretty straightforward. So I'm just gonna paint this, and we'll come back, and once the dark paint's down, and then we'll look at how we're gonna apply these masks, and then come back with a light color all over. Okay, it's been about an hour and a half, two hours since I put the paint on. Lovely, smooth coat. Um, let's take these off real quick. Um, so yeah, really nice and smooth. Great color as well, I really like how it turns out. So let's go ahead and add the mask. So basically what you can do is you look at the instructions here. 
and we'll start with this um, horizontal stabilizer, the left one. So see it's number three. So on that sheet here, we just look and number three, we're just gonna peel it off. Again, it's vinyl, no kind of gooeyness or anything. And we're just gonna look at the instructions and kind of like figure out roughly how it kind of goes. So, mm, just looking here, looks like it goes close that power line, but kind of hugging it. A little bit more in, about there. And there. Cool. Easy as that. I'm just going to press it down my finger. And that's it. So when we spray light over, obviously you can have that peel it off. You have the dark bit underneath it. So that's that one. Um, let's do one of the back ones here. Number four goes up here. So just going to take number four, which is this guy. And this one sits. Let me see where it goes. You got this bit, power line, so it's, it's just a bit above it, about here, it runs down the middle, uh, about there, I'd say, um, looks pretty good, uh, maybe a little bit over. flatten out my finger and as easy as that um, the great thing is being vinyl you can keep there's no gooey residue as I mentioned you can keep pulling them up and pushing them down somewhat reusable I guess as well um, if we use the same pattern again in the future um, yeah I don't like to keep these things down way too long what happens is I'll, I'll basically mask it I'll paint it leave it half an hour an hour just to kind of kind of you know dry off the paint and then just with my tweezers to pull them all off um, and then let kind of let the paint, paint dry fully from there so that's that one done um, and pretty much I mean, I don't need to go through the whole thing to show you guys, but I'll just go through, you know, there's not many, there's only 15 total. So I'll just basically follow this chart and apply all the um, rest of the masks on. And when I'm done, we'll come back and show you and then we'll get the paint on. Okay, our sheet is clear and we're done with the 15 decals. Um, not too bad at all. Um, all on, as you can see, it looks very nice, bright yellow. Um, on these guys here on the tail, a little bit of a gap I had, so I just put a little bit of masking tape behind it just to reinforce it. Um, kind of strange a little bit how it's dark in the middle and on the inside it's dark. Dark in the middle on the outside and then it's dark on the outside and the inside. Wait, that doesn't make sense at all. I know, whatever. Um, this is on no problem at all. Um, try to figure out a little bit how to do how to do this guy. Um, again, just looking through the instructions, it wasn't that clear. What I found too was easier is put this one in first and then kind of stick these bits over the top because they didn't quite meet perfectly. So um, again, a little bit more tape down the middle, just to cover, make sure there's no in the front, just make sure there's no um, bleed. And we look pretty good to go, I think. Um, yeah, so that's fully masked. So again, this is gonna be dark colors and we're gonna spray the whole thing upper and lower with now the aggressor gray, which is FS36. 251 or attacker 157 in this case um so yeah there's a lack of paint so it'll dry super quick so i'll get this sprayed all over um sprayed um we'll come back in about just give it an hour and then um afterwards and i will peel off the masks and see how we look hopefully no bleeding okay so it's been about 45 minutes since the paint's been on i know it's lack of paint so it dries pretty quickly and it is pretty much dry so we'll go ahead and take some of these off um, I'm trying to think the best way to do is I almost scratched the paint up when I pull the corner up. Okay, this is kind of stuck on pretty good. Um, it's not quite normally as sticky as this. Feel that? But nonetheless, it is coming up okay. Hopefully you can see on the camera the, um, it's leaving some stickiness behind.
Okay. Now maybe my problem here is I might have been too eager, I might put them on a little bit too soon over the paint coat before. Um, but nonetheless, it is pulling the paint up, it is staying, so I mean it is looking pretty good if you can see that in the light. Okay, that's good. Just gotta be careful here with the tweezers. So I don't wanna put them in too much and just kind of scratch the paintwork. So it's a little tricky just pull the corner up here, but there we go, that one guy off too. Okay, taking a little bit of masking tape there off the um, the canopy, so I'm gonna make sure I do put some more masking tape on that for either clear coat and stuff and washes, so I don't want to damage the um, the canopy there. Um, pull this piece off right here. Again, I'm pulling off the um, the canopy mask, which is ideal. You go. So, looking good again. The light. Let me turn the light down. Maybe you can see it a little bit better in the contrast. There you go. You can see it. Um, certainly a hell of a lot easier to mask it by hand. Um, this wasn't a particularly difficult scheme though, but um, pretty happy how it all turned out. Um, like I can see the mask, unfortunately, the canopy. Um, I've got the paint on the canopy, so it's going to be clear coats and stuff, so I can just, you know, not be too too, too um, precise with, with getting that on, but I'll definitely get the mask tape back on the canopy before I do anything else. Um, and on the other side here, you can see the paint work too. Um, does feel a little bit re residue left on there, so I might have to see if I can get that off somehow. Um, but what I'll do is now, I'm just going to leave this overnight to fully cure for I'm kind of handle it, mess with it too much, and then we'll come back um, and go from there. So I'm going to canopy up. Um, what I'll do then is, um, if this paint works good, um, then I'll have clear coat it with LP9 for a gloss coat in preparation for the decals and the wash, panel line wash. And once that's dry, we're seeing it, we'll mask the back up here and get that metallic painted on the bottom, which is iconic with, you know, with these um, eagles. So, okay, so let me leave this truly set up, um, get this paint fully dry, and we'll come back and work on the rest of it. Okay, guys, so we're painted. We had some issues to talk about, um, but finally, we're looking good in good shape. So, as you know, when I pulled off those vinyl masks, it left some real bad residue all over the, the model. Um, what I did was which is probably a bad thing to do is I took a sanding sponge, like a 3000 grit spanning, sanding sponge, and then 600 after that, and tried to sand it off, and it made the whole thing tons worse. So I used some old kind of housewife's tails and used WD-40, which didn't really work at all, to be honest with you. Now I realize out in the garage I have some goo gone. So I went with that, and I thought to myself, man, this is going to ruin the paint work, it's going to destroy the model, my prepared myself to go back to primer and start again but put a little bit of that onto paper towel wiped it over and it came up a treat it didn't affect the paint work at all so long story short it got the residue goo gone and didn't affect this is lack of paint it didn't affect the paint at all um i should have gone that right away but because i went for the whole balabra sanding and trying to get rid of it and other things um i did have to kind of redo pretty much much of the, most of the paint work so the edges were okay, which fortunately enough, so um, what I did was basically kind of cleaned it off. After that goo gone, I came back with some airbrush cleaner, just wiped it over the model, and then some water as well, just to clean it, because I, I didn't know how that goo gone was going to react with stuff on top of it. It's a little sticky. Even though I kind of wiped it off, the residue was still there, and I figured, hey, it's not going to, no paint's going to adhere to it. It might be a problem down the road. So make sure I got the goo gone off, and um, with my airbrush, I just took the dark color paint again, and just um, by hand, just sprayed it all back in, um, and we're good to go. Um, this wing from where I sanded right here, some really fine rivet detail and uh, I lost it. So I definitely have to come back with the old rotated riveter, riveting tool. And uh, fortunately the lines were somewhat still there so I could just follow with you know, the metal ruler, just put those few rivets in the middle of the panel of the, um, the wing right here. 
This is a 0.75, which is the smallest I have, and it seems to work pretty good. Um, again, it's so fine. Look, pretty much, actually, pretty much the same size, to be honest with you. So, I'm banning 500 for these Aeroscale, Aeromask vinyl ones. Um, two, using four times. Twice worked out great. Twice I've had issues. So last time I did the ambush scheme on the Hornet, and that, a ton of bleed and stuff, so I had to re basically mask and paint the whole thing again. Um, this time around, obviously, all that stickiness and didn't come off very well. So um, it could be user error. Like I said, I did maybe put them on and paint a little bit longer. Maybe should have left it overnight. Um, or what I'm thinking possibly is, I think I ordered those masks in the summer, maybe August time. So I think maybe them being out in the mail truck all day in 100 degree heat might have affected the stickiness and the residue. Because when I peel them off, they were kind of hard to peel off too. So I think it may be in shipping them in the summer. I think it might have affected it. So I'm not going to blame the company right now boycott using them i think i would maybe give them one more shot and see how it goes next time around um but like i said i think it might be the warm weather possibly affected them um just again being out transit from wherever they came for a few days um in that kind of really hot heat so anyway so we fixed it in the end um put on the gloss coat on top of it to seal it all in to protect the paintwork um again i don't know if you can see you can see that but look at two color shades but we're looking good and glossy so what i'm gonna do now is I'm going to mask up the back end um, on the top and the bottom. Show you my book. So, if you guys can see that, you see how the bottom has that kind of polished aluminum at the back? And um, it kind of follows through on the top as well, a little bit more. Hold the book up here. There you can see. See here, we're we'll painting these up. So, the good thing about leaving those tails off and painting them separately is it make it a little bit easier to mask around it. So, we're gonna, I'm gonna mask it off and then we'll get paint, paint that with some polished aluminum. Um, and that's gonna pretty much finish the paintwork. I think there's a couple of panels we need to paint um, here and there, for, but um, we'll take care of that in a minute. But yeah, for come back, um, you know, models don't always go to plan. Um, the th main thing is don't panic when these things happen, just relax and you can always fix them in the end, like I did. It took, it took me a few hours extra work, but I got there in the end. Um, so, okay, so back to the painting. Okay, so no dramas this time around. We got the, the metallic on. You can see on the back here. Using my reference book, just kind of figure out where it goes so on the back and underneath. So you can see it's a little bit not pure one color. I used several different colors on here, which we'll talk about in a minute. So we used AK Extreme Metal Polished Aluminum for the main color. And then I came back in and missed it in certain areas, the steel, to give it some little bit of, um, you know, in the light it catches different colors to steel and finally the darker areas which I like to use on when I use metallics I used to use my source metal and this one I use an old very old bottle Alclad which is ALC113 exhaust metal um, it's all you can't see the labels all worn away but the other three colors you use so basically came on with the uh, like I mentioned polished aluminum first then you see in some light hit the steel misses it on then came certain areas, just came in very, again, very light misting, very, very light, like literally probably a quarter of a liter if that I used probably of the um, exhaust metal, just to tighten towards the end and just certain areas darken it up. It was a little too dark here, so I came back again over with some um, steel, just went, went over it steel, so you can still see it through the steel, um, but it gave quite a nice effect. So that's the back done. As you can notice, too, I also added the nose, and the only other thing I painted was right here at the front, this little this little guy square at the front is the underside color, the aggressor gray, um, the lighter color we use. So just came back, masked that off pretty easy, just a square and sprayed that in. Um, and that is it. We are painted. Um, a little trouble with the mask, but we got there in the end. Um, really like how it turns out. I'm not sure how well on the camera you can see the two colors. I think in that light you probably can just about make it out. There's not a huge difference, but um, it's easier to the eye, I think, than um, actually on the camera. But yeah. So looking really good. Um, you see all this beautiful detail on here still, which is going to come out of the panel wash. So that's it for this week, the painting side of things. Next week we'll come back and we'll do the wash. Um, well, firstly, you also get the decals on, seal the decals in, and get the wash on, and then start the weathering process. Um, one thing I didn't mention also, all the why I had paint and the light color paint in the gun um, earlier on. I went ahead and painted all the other little bits and bobs too. So like the fuel tanks and pylons and all the gear doors that kind of stuff just that's all painted ready to go too again while well, the paint was a gun i just sprayed that real quick and that's been clear coated ready for a wash too um so yeah 
a lot going on this one um but yeah liking how it's turning out thus far um and yeah so thank you for watching if you haven't already please consider subscribing and you get lots of all my upcoming videos and i'll be back next week for another video so thank you and goodbye